Weeders. I'm Beth Myers Shanai with the Oregon Department of Agriculture's Noxious Weed Control Program, and I'm here in our greenhouse today to introduce you to a couple of the specimens in our educational weed specimen garden. Today I have meadow hawkweed and orange hawkweed to show you. We have three species of hawkweeds listed on our state noxious weed list in Oregon. The other one is mouse ear hawkweed, and I'm hoping to get a specimen here for you for that one soon. Now, these two hawkweeds grow very similarly um, and in the field when they're not flowering, they're um, not easy to tell apart immediately, although there are some subtle differences. Um, and in some cases in Oregon, they kind of grow together. If you're working on a site, you may find both of them. Although we have more meadow hawkweed in Oregon than we do orange hawkweed. So um, as you can see, both of these pots are just chock full of plants. And I started with just a single small rosette in each one of them, um, but they've grown so much vegetatively that this meadow hawkweed is even trying to come out the bottom of the container. So you can see how fast and how matted um, an area could get with these plants when they're left unchecked. One of the characteristics of both of these is that they have very hairy leaves. I'll try to move this around a little bit and see if we can catch any of that hairiness in the sunlight. Maybe even get it a little bit closer for you. And in the case of meadow hawkweed in the field, I generally see the rosettes stand up a little straighter. So it wouldn't be uncommon to see a rosette sticking up almost vertically um, before it bolts and starts to flower. One of the main differences I can see vegetatively for both of these though is this very reddishness to the orange hawkweed stem that we see here in the pot. Again, might not be as distinctive in the field, but generally there's a little bit more of a purple quality to these stolons that are running out to start all these new baby daughter plants. Um, in the ones that we can find here, it's more of a brownish color stem on the one here in the greenhouse. Um, and when I lift it up and look underneath, it's actually, I see kind of mostly whitish um, on the newer ones that are just forming. So that would be another key thing to look for. When these plants are blooming um, or bolting, they both have very tight, um, compact clusters of buds that appear to be almost blackish. They have little glandular hairs that are black, and you can often see those standing out against the other vegetation as you're looking for them. Um, and then when they flower, those clusters kind of open up and relax a little bit, and you get bright yellow flowers with the meadow hawkweed and bright orange flowers with the orange hawkweed. So these um, plants not only mat very well, really cover the ground and don't la allow anything else to kind of get purchased in the area. But um, they're also allelopathic. So they are actually exuding chemicals from their roots that discourage the growth of other things even if they could get in there. Um, because they also produce very viable uh, wind-blown seed, they also can scatter even more widely across an area to start forming new mats like these. So a very important one to keep your eye out for, um, if you find these very hairy rosettes that have these kinds of stolons growing from them, um, without the stolons, they can look like a lot of other weedy aster plants, uh, like cat's ear or other things that are out there. Um, these definitely don't have any kind of um, waviness or crenations or serrations to the edges of the leaves. Their leaves are entire. Um, but they still resemble a lot of other plants until you notice this mattingness, the stolons. Um, then it would definitely be a plant to take a sample of or keep your eye on to see if they bolt further. So um, with that, I'm going to say goodbye from the greenhouse for now. I hope you stay tuned and learn lots more about the other plants I have to come. Thanks guys, bye-bye.